What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench and today we're going to do something a little bit different. Typically we're working on guns, we're working on cleaning, we're working on something. But today I was inspired by a video I saw on the internet and it got me thinking if we can do this on the channel because I've looked and I haven't found any DIY videos on how you can do this at home. So what we're going to do is we're going to embark on an adventure together and figure out if we can make this happen. <clears throat> we're calling this project CGS, the Covert Gun Storage. Now, I'm sure a ton of you have seen this video on the internet already where a guy um, asks Alexa to that he needs guns or that he needs more guns and the cabinet opens with the guns and the drawer opens with the guns. And I loved it. Um, I'm not too keen on the Alexa part of it, but I don't really think that's too hard. You just have a smart switch and you program your Alexa to a different command. That's the easy part. What I want to know is how can we convert a current dresser into one of these right now? A couple of the, the steps that we're going to go through to this to get the top off. Every guy knows objective one is get the top off, right? Um, Build interior frame shelf to the dimensions of the current cabinet. And we're going to put this thing on a test fit. We're going to do a paint job on it. And we're going to make custom foam inserts for the rack and the shelf on the back so they sit nicely in there. And also maybe for the drawers. I'm still debating on whether or not I can do something with these drawers to make them not only automated, but maybe we can use like a magnetic mechanism baby latch kind of thing to allow access to them. Still on the fence about that, but that's the plan. So let's look at the piece. So this is our piece right here. It's a four drawer cabinet. This cabinet, fun fact, um, was bought in 1979. This was my baby dresser and my parents had it for all these years. Over the years, it's gotten a paint job. It was an originally, if you can see right there, originally originally yellow we painted it brown spray painted it brown to match current furniture um but this thing is in really great shape um all the slides work nothing's missing from the handles um it's even got the original maker's mark right there simmons furniture Wisconsin, 1979. Okay, so where we're gonna start first here is we wanna see if we can take this top off of here. So that top is held on by two flathead screws on this side, two flathead screws on this side, and then we've got one, two, and three on the back. Theory here, this top should just lift off and once we do that we'll be able to get good internal dimensions and kind of figure out how big our internal shelf or our internal cabinet is going to be so let's see how we did that came off perfect and you can see this is a Really nice piece of wood, um, very well put together. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna measure <clears throat> our length as well as our width of our internal cabinet. And then we can go from there and figure out how big our shelf is gonna be. Okay, so our dimensions here were 15 inches deep, 33 inches wide, and 28 inches high. Now, these are all internal dimensions. So our internal shelf that we're gonna do, we're gonna make it six inches deep, 31 inches wide, and 26 inches high. This will give us one inch of room on either side here to allow for up and down movement. Since we're 33, we're gonna take two inches off of that. And then for the height, we're gonna take two inches off, which will allow us one inch there and one inch at the bottom and that should give us again some some wiggle room as well 
So what we need to do next is we need to find out what size actuator we're going to use to make this thing go up and down. All right, so we have our TV mount actuator came today, so we're going to open this up and see what we got. It is, as it says, heavy. You can see right here. Okay, so <clears throat> my biggest concern with this was will it fit in the cabinet? From the looks at it, we should be good. This is 26 inches. And based on our measurements in our box, which is 28 inches high, we're going to be perfect. Now the reason I went with this model as compared to some others is <clears throat> this one actually extends out. So if you can see right here, each one of these arms comes up independently. Some others you'll see, it's just one arm and then that comes up like that. So the length of this is actually how far it'll go. I like this kind of step design to the others. It costs a little bit more, but <clears throat> I think in the long run it's going to work out uh, and luckily it's going to fit so let's put this baby in okay so what we did is put some support structure here on the back using one by six nailed screwed and glued we had to put a little spacer on this one here so that our top can come up you can see a little bit of room there without that spacer it would hit that top rail now there's no mounting on the base of this um, I guess I could drill some holes through to mount it but I don't really think that it's gonna shift left or right once we get it we're gonna put another strap on this side just to keep it a little bit more secure and then on the bottom what we did is we reinforced the bottom with a one by six braced it ladder fashion so it could support the weight of this so at this point <coughs> the unit works it's in its rough spot we're going to add some a little bit more support structure here to it and I think our next step here is to start building our cabinet. Today we are going to be building the cabinet for our interior lift here. And what we did was off camera I took the dimensions and the sizes with our lift. And basically what we found here is our box is going to be 26.75 inches high by 31 0.5 inches wide and we're going to make it five inches deep now we're going to be making two cuts here we're using three quarter inch plywood so our sides are going to be 25.25 high by five inches deep now we needed a total clearance from the bottom to the top of 26 inches so we took the three quarters inch off of that because that's going to be the end of our top piece and we so essentially this is going to be 25.25 inches and then our tops are going to be a full 31 and a half and five inches deep <clears throat> you can see there that's how we're we're going to be doing it um, again we're using three quarter inch thick plywood i bought that in a 24 by 48 sheet so we split it we ripped it using our uh, table saw here into five inches strips and then we cut two at 25 and a quarter and two at 31 and a half 31 and a half our top and our bottom panel and then our 25 and a quarter inch side panels now we're going to screw from the top down so what we did was we pre-drilled and countersunk our holes here so just to give you an idea, we're going to have this in, right? And then as it comes up, it'll expose itself. It's 
going to stop right about there at that height and that'll be our stuff so our next step in this is we're going to put a back on this and then we're going to prime everything so as you can see i stripped down all of the black off of this we also have our pieces out here which have been stripped so we're ready for primer and then we'll be able to start hopefully finally assembling and figuring out what we're going to do with these drawers i have two ideas i'm not quite sure which one it's going to be yet but we'll figure it out as we go along so next step put the back on and prime we used a spray paint on the inside just a flat black that'll help conceal some of the components and then we primed the outside here <clears throat> using just the kills primer and then our interior cabinet here we did again in a flat black and I have an idea here for the back um, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do you're just going to have to see it in the reveal but I think it's going to look pretty damn cool so we're going to let this dry and I'm not quite sure what we're going to do next so I guess we'll find out okay so we're working on our cabinet here we have this face down on the inside is done um, you'll see that reveal when we show this whole thing so I'm not going to show the inside of it and give it away uh, but I want to kind of show you why we chose to do this this way so our backing is reset in there we didn't just lay it over top um, I feel like this way as long as you're square which is very important um, it gives a little bit more structural integrity to the sides and the top when you can recess that piece in there. And then just to make sure we've got um, good structural integrity here, we're adding some corner brackets on the inside corners or the, the back corners, I guess you could say. And once we finish this last one up, we'll be done with this. All we'll have to do next is just bolt it to the arm. Now what I used here was, hmm, 5 16 ply. Remember, this is three quarter for the frame, 5 16 for the back. We'll drill this guy in and we'll call this guy done. And what we'll be doing next after that is we're going to do a dry fit, bolt it to the arm, and then we're going to have to figure out how we're going to cut this top because I don't want the whole top to lift up. I only want the part that covers to lift up and there'll be a little seam here but the way that we're going to stain this it's not going to show um <clears throat> so that's what we're going to be doing next once we finish that last arm right here okay so we have bolted our cabinet here to our piece and we used quarter inch bolts here washers on either side not in the back um, and this is now, this is pretty pretty sturdy here. The only thing that's moving is the actual arm itself. Um, but you can see here that it functions as it should. Perfect. I mean, so far so good. So I guess we're gonna have to do this top next. We've been putting it off for a while, so. We'll get this top set up we're gonna have to rip it um because <clears throat> i don't want to lift the whole top off i want to have a little bit of a shelf here in front i don't want it to be open when this comes up so that shelf will go here so you have a little bit of a workspace not much we're talking maybe four and a half inches or so uh, so next up is that guy over there the top so what we did with the top was we put it through our saw and we just ripped it right here and if you can see i used right there uh i want to say it was a 10 degree 
here so when it comes down it'll fit a little tighter as opposed to just falling straight down we'll have a little bit of a little bit of um, tightness there in that now for the doors <coughs> the front we had a nightmare trying to make what we had work so we had to switch it up so instead of our doors folding down like this because I couldn't use the existing drawers that we had they went to scrap I made myself two shaker fronts like this and what we're doing is we're just gonna put them on here like so in our hinges and then it'll close like so not really thrilled about that but it's kind of the way that it turned out and we're just gonna have to go with it so now in here we've got our partitioned off area we've got two shelves which will be exposed by the drawers or cabinet doors I guess now they're not drawers anymore they're doors um, and then we have our let's just show you how we did this got our separate pocket here which our thing will rise in so now what we're doing we're done we're just gonna put some paint <clears throat> and this was the color that I decided on it's a nice kind of cadet gray bluish gray color we'll do two coats of this and then we're gonna add a faux glaze on it a black faux glaze which will kind of give it an antiqued distressed earthy kind of look so let me get this two coats of primer on and I'll show you how we do the glaze. So now our paint has dried. We've got a nice two coats on here. What we're going to do is we're going to add a faux glaze with a black tint. Now what I use is this right here. You mix four parts of this to one part of your paint. I just got a sample. It was $2. I think this is around 8 bucks. And you apply this using a brush. You mix it up here the key to this at least for me one from what I found is not to use brush strokes is to just dip the tip of your brush in there and when you apply this you're gonna apply it kind of like this in a very random pattern focus on the corners I found that using this as opposed to stroking gives you a much better finish using whatever motion you want to do circle um, dabbing you're going to take this off so we're just going to use small wax on wax off circles here like so and that's done and it'll this is the grain of the wood that we're seeing i'm going to show you the other side you'll see how they differ which is why I like this method. So the other side we did here, you can see different grain, um, but I think it gives a nice contrast. Here's the door to the piece when it's all put together. Add some nice hardware on it and it's gonna look good. So I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna let this dry for about 30 minutes and then we'll be able to assemble it together. <clears throat> so we have it assembled together. Finally, the assembly was pretty good. It didn't really take a lot here to, to put it together. So let's go over the uh, the final reveal here and some additions that I've added. So first thing I did is I put casters on this because it's heavy with the actual piece plus the mechanism <clears throat> plus what we're going to put inside. The weight got up there, so I wanted to make it a little easier to move around if I needed to. Secondly, inside here where our cabinets are, or, or shelves, we put child safety locks. So now when we activate these, and we close this, it's now locked. Now to unlock that, obviously you all know how child locks work. There we go, and we can get in. <clears throat> So leave that open for a second. 
we did a nice coat of beeswax over all this so it's nice and sealed the finish is really good it feels nice it's smooth it's not rough we also did the shelves here for the same thing so now let's open it up and see how we did inside So the lights are in the cabinet. We use basic LED strips here. Then we have our cabinet here. They're LED strips. We've got some of our toys in here. Then we have a nice working counter shelf here. You can also store on the bottom of this as well, which is nice. And to put it back, all we do is just use our remote here okay and it's going to go down we have it automatically set to stop right at that point right about halfway is when the lights go off okay and then we should see this settle back into position perfect we'll close this up and that's it so, it took a lot of work to get this done. My opinion, my suggestion, it would probably have been easier for me to just build the unit as opposed to retrofitting one. It just would have been easier. So if you have the means and the knowledge to build the cabinet, by all means do that. If you have to retrofit, be prepared for surprises. Make sure you're looking at drawers, whether they're functional or not. Remember, we wanted our drawers didn't work so we had to adapt and change a little bit so i hope you learned a little bit of this i know that wasn't in super detailed like some of my other diys because there was so much behind the scenes that had to get done on this i didn't want to make this video super super long but i just wanted to show you what you can do if you put your mind to it have a little basic woodworking knowledge on a little vision until next time make sure you're practicing safe firearms handling and teaching your friends families and shooting buddies God bless America. She too out. Alexa, let's party. It's Boogaloo time, baby face. Strap up. Alexa, shut the party down. Going dark. I hope you fared well in the boogaloo. Until next time. You is the best.